Hey everybody, welcome to an all new Trenny and C, except there's uh, one half missing today. Uh, just C with you here today, I'm going to bring you a solo review. Trenny and I decided that uh, for 2019, we were going to try and do some more solo reviews. We're going to rotate, I'll do one at my place, he'll do one at his place, and then we'll just upload them separately, we'll edit them separately, and uh, just kind of rotate. And the reason for that really comes down to the fact that um, we can't get together frequently enough to um, get enough videos done to do regular reviews. Because our Thursday videos have pretty much turned into, you know, um, this versus that, or a blind tastings, or whiskey research, or any number of different things. We've been struggling just to get regular old reviews done kind of like the meat and potatoes of a whiskey channel and we're not really doing it as much as we'd like to so we just felt if we kind of went at it solo that we'd be able to chip away at it so <clears throat> Thursdays we're still gonna be doing videos together Saturdays are still gonna be you know unboxings and other things like that and we're gonna add in a, uh, a third video oh and Wednesdays will still be uh, live streams of course we're gonna rotate our Wednesday live streams between patron only live streams and uh, live streams for everybody uh, but I'm thinking that these solo reviews are probably gonna come out on Mondays so in some cases that's gonna be four days a week of Trenny and C so can you handle that I don't know I don't know if I can but uh, Anyway, I'm going to kick it off here. I'm going to do my first solo review, and I am going to try for my reviews. I think I'm going to focus on Canadian whiskey and bourbon, which are a couple of my passions, and uh, Trenny will specifically be sticking to uh, scotch and probably other world whiskeys, the Irish, Japanese, or anywhere else worldly. So I'm kicking off with a Canadian whiskey. I'm going to open up the globe here. And today I have the uh, Canadian Club Classic 12 year old. Let me take a look at that. It'll focus in. Okay. So let me do some housekeeping here. Bring out a glass and a coaster. It's only right to keep it clean. I got my Trinian Sea coaster, my glass. Close things up there. Okay, so this is the Canadian Club Small Batch Classic 12 year old. It's 40% alcohol. Um, it is aged in bourbon barrels. And let's get right into it here. Still trying to figure out my camera angle, how much either side and whether my head's getting cut off or not, but uh, we shall see. I'm also gonna stick to the normal or our, our uh, previously normal color, nose, taste, finish, and viscosity. Probably just score each one, uh, each of those categories not do a total y'all y'all can debate my scoring system like usual so just kind of getting right into it looking at that color i mean it almost has like a black tea very dark color to it all right there you go almost reddish in the color but yeah so as far as color is concerned I like that I mean I like the way the the light glares off there a bit of a ruby red kind of thing going on. I'm gonna give it an 8 on color I think it's pretty decent I'm gonna give it a second in the glass there so Canadian Club was originally a Hiram Walker uh, product it was distilled uh, in Michigan and it's my understanding that because of prohibition it drove Hiram Walker over the river and uh, back into Canada 
And so this whiskey was very uh, famous at the gentlemen's clubs. It was doing very well for itself. And so American distillers petitioned to, um, so, it was, so it was called a club whiskey is what I'm getting at. It was, uh, it was in the gentlemen's club. So that's kind of where the club part of Canadian club comes in. And so back to what I was saying about the American distillers, they kind of thought, okay, if, if we um, petition to have the word Canada or Canadian added onto the label there, it will probably deter people from, from buying it. And it turned out that it had the opposite effect and it actually boosted in, in uh, popularity when they added Canadian on there because it kind of added this exclusivity to the product. And uh, so business was booming back in the day. Uh, and so then Prohibition hits and uh, one of Canadian club's uh, big clients uh, became Al Capone. So quite a, uh, an interesting history that goes along with Canadian club as a brand, not specifically this whiskey here, but um, just as a brand overall. And today it's actually a Beam Suntory product. So that's just to give you a little bit of a historical look back on Canadian club. And so getting into the nose, kind of a rich charred toffee, kind of a creamy smell to it, some vanilla. And you can see me breathing, I'm just breathing, I'm fogging up the glass a little bit here because at the time that uh, I'm doing this video, it's actually minus one degree Celsius out. So, I'm in the garage, the Trenny and C studio is uh, not heated or insulated, but today I have the little space heater going. I'm trying to trying to make it comfortable in here, but as you can see, the glass is uh, fogging up quite quickly as I, as I nose this one. But yeah, also some, some vanillas, corn, uh, maple syrupy, Yeah, it's good. Uh, on that nose, I think I'm gonna stick with the eight. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty nice, inviting nose. It definitely makes you want to get into it and, and drink it and taste it. So if it tastes like it noses, it should be pretty good. So here we go. take another dip here vanillas toffee similar to how it was on the uh, on the nose kind of toasty definitely has a corn whiskey uh, type of a base to it that's very classically uh, Canadian corn kind of a taste to it And Canadian Club, like many other Canadian whiskeys, they distill each grain separately, and then they um, they blend it together, and then they age it. Sometimes they age them completely separately. So it all depends. But in this case, I believe that the grains are um, are distilled separately and then aged together for twelve years. Mm. So. It has a sweetness to it for sure. And it's got a drinkability to it. It's fairly mild. The 40% um, makes it very drinkable and easy on the palate. Almost like a maple butterscotch kind of thing going on. And you know, this is the first time while I'm doing this review that it's starting to kind of feel a little bit different not having Trenny here because normally as I'm tasting and kind of 
my brain is processing what I'm tasting, Trenny would be saying his tasting notes. So if you notice in our regular videos, there's not a lot of kind of like dead air because one of us is speaking. And when, when one guy stops talking, the other guy interjects. Half the time we're just talking over each other. So this is a little bit like, it's kind of like awkward silence. So this is gonna be something that I'm gonna have to get used to. I don't know how Trenny's gonna handle it, but uh, I was gonna try and take my time and not uh, not kind of rush into the next comment every time. Mm. So on the taste, I think I'm 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 still in that eight realm. So color so far was an eight. The nose was an eight, and the taste is an eight. I mean, it's very drinkable. The finish is a little bit uh, oaky, a little bit of char on there. You know, I would consider this to be kind of a sweet after dinner type whiskey. It's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a dessert whiskey. You know, you've got your your sippers, which are usually a little bit bolder and uh, maybe a little bit higher proof. And then you've got, you know, cocktail whiskeys and you've got, you know, your dessert whiskeys. So I would, I would categorize this one as a dessert whiskey. This will run you around $30 here in Canada. So, you know, you can get cheaper stuff for cocktailing you know, less age to it, maybe with a little bit less going on. So it's not, I mean, you could certainly could use it for a nice cocktail, but it's definitely um, drinkable on its own. And due to the, the lower percentage, it's, uh, as Trenny would say, crushable. And I'll just say drinkable. But yeah, a little bit of um, bitterness on the finish. A little bit of rye spice too at the end. Some warming in the chest for sure. So I'm feeling it kind of linger here a little bit. So there's a little bit of, uh, of rye to close it out. And you know what? Because I've been saying that everything's an eight, I think I'll keep it consistent. I think that the finish is about an eight as well. So overall, we're talking about an eight out of 10 whiskey. That's pretty solid. For $30, you can't go wrong with an eight out of 10. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up. I think that's gonna conclude my first uh, ever solo review. So hopefully you enjoy. I'd love to get your comments on what you think of the Canadian Club uh, Classic 12, or your comments on uh, this review or our theory on solo reviews in general. But anyway, it's great to have you and thank you for watching. Click like if you don't mind, uh, leave a comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Drinking whiskey, describing all the flavors for you and me. Irish, scotch, bourbon, and rye. If they like a bottle, they'll tell you.